Hello everyone, welcome to the ultimate guide for a charge character. Whether you are a beginner in charge character or you always wanted to try charge character but just never quite understand it or you are already good in charge character but you want to hear a different opinion or you don't play fighting games that much but you like to watch it, you want to understand a bit more and you're curious on how charge character works. This video is going to show you everything from how to do it, special techniques, and tips and tricks. I have split the video into seven levels, from level one being basic to level seven being most advanced. So level one is just gonna be basic charge, level two, charge buffering, level three, bread and butter basic charge combos, level four will be charge cancel into circular motion super, level five will be charge cancel into charge super, level six will be charge focus attack dash cancel into a charge super and level 7 being the most advanced is going to be charge partitioning so this video is going to be a bit long but I guarantee you guys you guys will learn a lot so let me set up the video for you guys level 1 basic charge for this tutorial I'll be using Street Fighter as demonstration and level 1 should be very easy for you guys that you guys already know to do a charge move, basically you hold back for about 2 seconds and then forward with a button or you're holding down for about 2 seconds and pushing up with a button. In this case, we have a flash kick and for Guile Super, we're basically charging back for about 2 seconds and then forward, back, forward. Okay? You guys should know that probably. And a general tip is if you want to charge and not be walking back, what you can do is you can charge down back, okay? That way you're not moving, but you're charging at the same time. The advantage of holding down back is that you're charging for two things rather than one. In this case, we're charging for a sonic boom and we're also charging for a flash kick. In the case of bison, you're charging for a scissor kick and a head stomp. In the case of a Honda, you're charging for a headbutt and a sumo smash. Okay, another tip I have for you is that charge move doesn't have to be peer or direct down up. Okay, this is peer down up. Okay, and this is peer back forward. Okay, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be down back to up back for a flash kick. It can be down back to forward down for a sonic boom. It can also be down back to up forward for a flash kick. Okay? It doesn't have to be the pure input. It can be mixed as long as you have satisfied the minimum input. In another word is for a sonic boom there is a pure input of back forward, right? But instead, I am doing a down back to, to down forward, which is fine because back and forward is within down back to down forward, okay? You, you understand what I'm saying? It's okay to do extra inputs, okay? The next tip I have for you is there is no need to go back to pure input. For example, what do I mean by that? Um, when you start a move, right? Uh, for example, let's say if, if you're blocking a low kick already in this position uh, um, and you're already holding down back, you don't, and you want to do a sonic boom, you don't have to go back to, to back and then do a sonic boom. You can just go straight from down back to a sonic boom or down back um, to a, a flash kick. You don't have to be like, oh, I have to go back to down and then up, okay? You don't have to do that. Level two, charge buffering. In my opinion, charge buffering is a very confusing and complicated term, an umbrella blanket category of many things. And to really explain it, it is a whole nother video on its own. So I really, uh, I don't want you to get hung up on this term too much. Rather, I want you to understand an idea 
and behavior. So to make this easier for everyone to understand, I'm going to explain it in this way. So to play a, char a charge character well, you have to charge as soon as possible. You have to charge as fast as possible and you have to charge as often as possible. You can charge before a move, right? You can be charging and then do this and you'll be ready for this. You can be charging at the same time while you're attacking and you'll be ready when, it's, when you need it. And you can charge after a move, basically. You can do a move and when you, but you're still, after the move, you're still holding back. So when you're charging, so you're still charging. So when you, when you, when you come back down, your, your sonic boom is instantly ready. So things like that. So in a combo, you're basically doing this. You're charging, you're attacking, you're charging, you're doing something, you're charging, you're, you're doing an action, you're charging. What does that all mean? Basically, it means you're constantly charging when you play. You're mixing your charge with other commands. You're overlapping your charge with other inputs and commands so that you already have the, the charge ready for the next move. And that's the idea of charge buffering. Uh, a buffer in, in computer term itself means something in a computer's memory where information can be stored for a short time. Okay, By taking advantage of the game's buffer system and inserting charge at every single place that the game allows you to, you can take, uh, you can take those charge charges you buffer and use it for the next move. Uh, so you should be constantly charging, whether like uh, if you're just jumping, you're charging. Uh, even though you're coming down to doing nothing, uh, you're still charging. Okay, so when you land, you have your charge ready. When you're pressing buttons, you know, you're charging. So that way everything is ready when you need it. When you finish a move, right, everything, uh, all the time, you're always charging. So um, to understand this, so understanding this behavior and um, will make you a better player and make your charges more efficient, okay? So a classic example of um, charge buffering can be basically if you jump in, right? So you how you see how there was, I was charged, I jumped, I basically jumped and I was charging like right here. As I landed, as I'm landing, I'm, I'm doing a heavy punch, coming down to do a medium punch and then into a sonic boom. But as soon as I did a sonic boom, I'm instantly pulling back to charge for the next sonic boom. Almost as if I'm doing it at the same time. Basically, punch and then forward and then coming back at the same time to charge. So that is kind of like an example of charge buffering. You're inserting charge in different parts if the game allows you to, so you're ready for the next uh, charge move. Level three, bread and butter combo. So here are some popular combos in Street Fighter, and I'm gonna make the screen turn green whenever I'm charging, so you get an idea of when I'm charging, okay? Okay, here's one. There's two. There's four. All right, what else? Uh, here's another one. Like that, okay? Level four, canceling a charge into a circular motion super. What do I mean by this? So as we all know, Yurin's shoulder is a charge move, right? It's done by holding back and forward kick. And we know his super is double quarter circle forward punch. So we're mixing charge and circular motion together. And, and we know that you can actually shoulder into super right so the command is supposed to look like this when you cancel the shoulder into the super the command 
is looks like this basically holding back forward kick quarter circle forward quarter circle forward and then punch right that is correct and is and it makes sense and you know it's very logical no one's gonna tell you that this command is wrong but I have a trick for you I can make it shorter so instead of doing Urien's uh, shoulder as back forward what you can do is you can actually do it as back quarter circle no back half circle forward like this what's the benefit of that the benefit is that now you can make this this line of command shorter so what happens now is you can actually do this so how does that work the first part was charging back and half circle right the input looks like this the input was basically back down back down um, down forward and forward because Urien's uh, shoulder command is back and forward but instead we did half circle so back and forward for the shoulder is contained with inside half the half circle command so the game will accept it and satisfy it as the shoulder command now on to part two when we activate the super all we need to do was just another quarter circle kick and remember we already did a half circle input right when we did this whoops when we did this so the half circle input for the shoulder contains the quarter circle in it so again the game will accept the quarter circle forward as the first part of the input for the super because the quarter circle forward is in it that's why all we needed was another quarter circle forward punch to cancel into super so the bottom line is the half the half circle uh, the half circle input alone satisfies the input it satisfies the input for the shoulder it also satisfies half of the input for the super therefore all we needed was just another quarter circle forward um, to cancel into super this way is a lot more efficient and faster level 5 canceling a charge move into a charge super a lot of people think this is very hard but it's actually very easy so let me show you how to do it uh, it's a lot easier than it looks you would think a uh, the command would look like back uh, would be like a sonic boom back forward punch and then back forward back forward punch for the super but it's actually shorter than that so all you have to do is basically do sonic boom twice if you can do sonic boom you can do that you can can cancel into super easily because it's just sonic boom sonic boom okay but you have to do it close so look at look very easy okay so you just have to charge for the first sonic boom and so you so you get the sonic boom out once the sonic boom is out you want to quickly do another back back forward sonic boom to cancel into super okay so it's looking look like this right it's actually very easy so if you can do a sonic boom you can easily cancel into super now part two we're gonna learn how to do a flash kick into super okay so to do this it's not very hard just give it yourself some practice so you want to do down back and then you want to go to forward up basically diagonal up it will give you a flash kick right so now after you do the flash kick you want to come back to down back and then go um, go to up forward again basically diagonal again with punch and that would give you the super so basically down back diagonal down back diagonal okay why well, to say down back diagonal kick and then down back diagonal punch okay uh, so do this 
like that. So you still have to charge for uh, the, 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 the flash kick, okay? You still have to charge for the, the flash kick. Once you get the flash kick out, you, you just want to do the same movement again, okay? You want to do the same movement again twice, uh, but one with kick and then one with punch, okay? So that, so now you, you'll be able to do car moves like, like these easily, okay? Level six, dash into charge super. What is the advantage? The advantage is that it gives you a range. So if you do Guile's super normally, right? It doesn't hit your opponent from all the way on the other side. But if you do a dash into the super, it will, it will hit them. So as you can see, it hits from all the way from this side to that side. But I don't recommend learning dash into a char super in Street Fighter V because it's not very helpful. Um, but if you're curious and you want to challenge it, it's basically holding back, forward, 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 and then back, forward into the punch. You basically have to do all that within that hop when he's, when he's, when he's hopping. So you have to do, do it like holding back, forward 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 back forward punch very fast so do it as fast as possible if you want to challenge yourself um so yeah so i don't recommend learning or uh, using this in street fighter 5 because the game actually tries to eliminate this by making it like extremely hard uh, because they they want to make the game different from street fighter 4 uh but in street fighter 4 is definitely a lot more useful and a lot easier to do compared to Street Fighter 5. So let me show you some examples in Street Fighter 4. In Street Fighter 4, it's a lot easier. You can even do it with focus attack. So to do it is basically holding back forward, forward, back, forward, three punches. And the focus attack one is basically focus attack and, and, and holding back. And then uh, same thing, forward, forward, back, forward, three punch, okay? So let me tell you why. It goes through it, but he can block it because it's too far, okay? So, he can actually block that or I can get hit by the fireball, right? Get him out of my way so he can do a fireball. But if I can catch him, something like this, I can actually hit him. So it basically closed the gap, okay? Finally, we have reach level seven, which is partition charge, okay? Uh, partition charge is a technique widely used in Street Fighter Third Strike. Uh, it doesn't exist in Street Fighter 4 or 5 anymore, so you don't really have to learn it. But because it exists, I wanted to show you. Uh, charge, Partition, or Partition Charge, same thing, depending how you say it. It's basically splitting the charges into smaller pieces. For example, if my headbutt was, let's say, 1.5 second, I am basically charging one second here, and then dashing, and charging 0.5 second here to get the total of my 1.5 second to finish my headbutt. So that's what partition charge is, splitting your charges into smaller chunks. Uh, because of the way the game is set up, you're able to store your your, your inputs, your charges, and it for, for a small window. Keep in mind, that there is a time frame window where all the charges have to be made. And you cannot overcharge like holding this for like five seconds, right? And then like, oh, and then I'm trying to do a headbutt. There has to be, it has to be be within a certain time frame. Um, but uh, you, it has, uh, so you have, so take some time to practice it. If you, if you have their strike and if you're curious and you want to challenge yourself, okay? So basically is hold down, uh, 
Let's start over. Basically hold down for one second, dash, and then hold down for another a tiny bit, and then do the head button. So when you add it all together, right? Charge, hold it, like that, okay? What would be the benefit of charge partitioning? Uh, for every character is different, but in this particular situation, Yurian, uh, he is very strong when he can sandwich his opponent with his super with something like this. So that way it becomes unblockable and you can just do your juggles and combos, right? So in other situations, this one is more simple, right? You just do this. But in other situations, he has a lot of setup. So, you know, by the time I come over here and try to sandwich him, your opponent would have already gotten up. So that's why partition is helpful in, in different setups. It helps him basically dashes over and then does the headbutt. So now let me show you an example. So for Yorin, it gives him the ability to jump over uh, characters very fast uh, before they get a chance to recover and things like that. Uh, par charge partitioning gives every character different benefits. So in this case, it makes Yorin especially strong because you can always you can always sandwich your opponents and start doing your combos. So it makes him very deadly when he can do uh, charge partitioning and when he has super. But since it is no longer in Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5. Um, you don't really have to learn it, but I just want to show you guys that uh, this charge technique exists. So that was a long video and a lot of information. Hopefully now you understand charge character at least a little bit more than before. And as you can see, charge characters can get pretty complicated. If this video helped you out, if you learned something new, like, comment, subscribe is always helpful for a small channel. Little by little, it will help me create more content for you guys. Really appreciate everyone's love and support. And as always, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you guys on the next video.